Namaste Starseeds, I am Ellie Orion, a spiritual mentor connecting my galactic knowledge with earthly experience so I can support you on your path of discovering inner strength. For this video I decided to make myself a cup of coffee, so let's jump straight into this topic of walking souls. I'm going to tell you how it was for me when I discovered that a man that I'm observing is a walking soul. We are going to talk about how is it even possible that a soul decides uh, on a body which is not original to it and why does it happen? So buckle up. I'm just going to put my coffee here so my hands are free. So let's start with the main thing before coming to earth. So basically souls before we come to physical reality and before choosing a specific uh, next incarnation, we're basically meeting up with our guides and we have this soul meeting with our soul family and everyone who is going to in a way co-create in a specific incarnation so that we basically get uh, the lessons that we need to evolve and to expand our consciousness. So it's always a mutual effort. That is the same thing, uh, for example, between two souls who co-created that one of them is going to leave the physical body and the other one at specific point of that person's life is going to enter the same physical body. So the first reason how that is possible between two souls, basically, um, if there is a need or it's recognized that Karma needs to be balanced between two souls. So for example, if there is any sort of, I'm gonna say it like this, karmic depth, and they understand, okay, maybe I can live this physical reality and then at some point leave, that you enter and finish this earthly mission. And that way our karma or our mutual karmic relationship is going to be balanced out. In my experience, because I energy uh, scan, I scan energy bodies and I work with lots and lots of clients. So I had opportunity to download lots of information in connection to um, the specific period of agreements and soul um, contracts before coming to earth. So I understood that that sort of uh, agreement is very rare. It happens, but it's very rare. So that is the first specific um, situation how that can happen so it's definitely agreed upon between two souls before coming to earth but as i said does not happen that often how do these walking situations most often happen it's actually incredible so seen from the perspective from higher beings and a higher vibrational beings our physical body is very sacred, so it's very valued, of course, because they understand, and of course, something that we can also associate with, there are lots more souls and not so many physical bodies. So that is why not even one physical body, if that is possible, is not going to be um, wasted. They don't want to waste physical bodies because, of course, it's this process on, on ascension and growing up and becoming adults. It's seen as a very, very slow process seen from the above perspective. So how is it possible that a walking soul decides, oh, I'm going to jump into this physical body? Basically, in situations when a person is dealing with lots and lots of emotional stress, when just the burden of life is too much for them to handle, of course, it can happen to everyone. We have all been there. But specific souls sometimes just cannot take it. That is also the reason why sometimes people do make this decision, which, is, which was not planned to take their own life. So not every um, uh, exiting of the physical body is planned. Sometimes it's just co-created with a specific environmental factors 
that emotional um, uh, emotional luggage or emotional disturbance is too much for one's soul in the physical. So in that sort of situation, when a soul um, unconsciously, because this process never happens consciously, our ego doesn't allow us. So when a soul unconsciously decides, I am definitely ready to leave my physical body. That is a soul, a soul level uh, decision. And it can be perceived by other higher vibrational beings. And as I said, because they consider, and it is like that, our body, our human body is sacred to them. They understand, okay, so this soul is ready at some point to leave this physical body. And then what happens? All the souls who recognize, or maybe that one specific walking soul, uh, recognizes, okay, so if I jump or if I walk into this physical body, I can be the one who is finishing this earthly mission because all of us, we have specific earthly missions, we have galactic missions, we have soul missions. And throughout our incarnations, we are trying to collect them all, like it's Pokemon. So basically, the walking soul understands, oh, this is, this is expansion for both of us, if it's not basically uh, agreed before coming to Earth. So what happens then? Person takes their own life or something very traumatic happens, for example, in a very, very traumatic uh, uh, situation, and some sort of accident where basically a soul shock happens. The soul exits um, the physical body and another soul comes in at the same time of this exchange. And then what happens next? The person survives, the physical body survives. It's still in healthy, optimal, um, I don't know what's the word for that. Uh, it's very healthy and it's basically able to sustain the soul further on. But then the people around that person understand it's very subtle, but with time you can really understand, you can sense it, but something is off. So sometimes the personality changes, the way how they're expressing themselves changes. And people who are very close to that person, they can just sense something is different. So it's possible uh, that if you recognize someone like that, or if they're telling you, if people around you uh, are telling you that something is different, it might be that you are a walking soul, but don't know it yet. But I must really place focus on this. Do not mistake being a walking soul with someone who is uh, working on themselves. Because in spiritual development, we are constantly improving ourselves. We are constantly changing. So for a spiritual person, of course, uh, it's possible that you compare yourself how you were and what was your life a year ago and say, but everything is different. Am I a walking soul? No, please do not mix those two terms up because they are very similar <laughs> as a spiritual developed people. We constantly seek for improvement. So of course, it's possible that um, you mistake your own uh, life or your own development for something that's so not original to you. So walking souls after entering the body, how do they feel? Basically, they understand everything what's happened to them in the youth and the childhood, depends when they entered the, the, this physical body. But they do not feel emotionally connected to the burden from before. For them, similar to all other experiences and um, everything connected with that karma or some bad experiences, bad things that happen to that physical body, they feel like they happen to someone else. Somehow they're not feeling connected with it. And that's amazing <laughs> because in that case, person just continues and person feels free. So being a walking soul, or if you know someone who is a walking soul, 
it's not necessarily something to be afraid of. It's just basically this beautiful co-creation between souls. And for some people, of course, it happens and it's necessary. So the next thing, how you, for example, can um, understand if you are a walking soul. For walk-ins, uh, usually they stop having any emotional connection with their family, with a partner, with children, with parents. They just feel there is no emotional bond. Of course, why? Because it's not even their family. <laughs> but usually uh, the soul family does co-create in that way. So walking soul is not someone you don't know. <laughs> a walking soul is usually someone who has incarnations with you or there is some sort of soul connection there. They're not going to allow any soul to jump into physical body if it's not for the highest good is what I meant. So I'm going to tell you how I discovered uh, that a man is a walking soul. Basically, I do energy scans. I was initiated by my 12 Orion guides. I have my 12 galactic guides. I was initiated um, to receive a specific energy technique. And of course, my third eye is opened since then. And I'm very much using my intuitive gifts like for my job and for everything that I do in my daily life. But as I said, I work with lots of clients and I do the energy scans. That means that I am basically scanning the energy field, this electromagnetic field, and I can tap into different vibrational, um, informations, energy centers, galactic informations, akashic informations, which are connected to some incarnation, but also uh, sets of earthly incarnations. This information is very important to know because that's how I figured out that a man that I was uh, scanning, who was my client, I figured it out, oh, he's a walk-in. So how did that happen? When I do my energy scans, I'm basically tapping into a Akashic field and I'm receiving energy that is, or information that is for the highest good uh, of the person. And I'm also understanding that I'm through the visions, I'm getting like, I'm basically a mental intuitive and I'm getting uh, downloads of uh, informations with visions, but rarely I get emotion. Of course, you can always find out what kind of intuitive you are, but I work with pictures and with downloads of information. So I'm a mental visual intuitive. So basically I was connecting with Akashic records for him and I was stepping into the past lives and I understood, wait a minute, the birth of the soul that I'm connecting with was in his thirties. So in this life, I got this sensation that he was born in the body at 30 something. So I was amazed because for me, that was the first time when I actually grasped that uh, information from my experience. Oh, this is a walking soul. So how did that happen to that man? He, when he was 30 something, he was going through a very, very traumatic car accident. And in that moment of the soul shock, the soul went and it came back. So it's very significant. Why, the, why did the exchange happen? Because his earth mission, because he's helping people, his earth mission was so significant and so important that a soul jumped in and continued for him for example he said that everyone is uh, everyone recognized that around him and they just could tell that something is off but they couldn't tell what so that's very significant to know that people do have those experiences and they're in a way very magical mystical and magical so something that's um also very interesting sometimes ascended masters and souls who are so highly evolved 
Sometimes they're so high in their soul evolution that there is no need for them to go through the karmic depths and cleansing and integration of shadows. So they don't have to be born. They don't have to go through youth, through adolescence. They don't have to do that. So those kind of very highly developed souls, they are sometimes also walk-ins. So that means that a healthy physical body stays, the soul leaves, and the ascended master or someone very highly evolved walks in and they just continue the mission. They don't waste any time. And for me, that information is absolutely divine. So walking souls, there is nothing to worry about. It's very mis mystical process for us. It's also important to know that sometimes it's impossible to tell that you are walking, if you're walking. And for example, there's specific um, techniques like uh, regression and uh, uh, hypnosis and different energy techniques where a person can remember the past lives and past timelines. Sometimes people in those kind of sessions, they speak out and they talk about how they're walking and how did they walk into this body and why and stuff like that. For example, there was a Dolores Cannon. She had one client like that. She basically gave her all the details and then she woke up and Dolores explained to her, you're a walking and she was shocked. She didn't want to accept that because it's very hard to accept that. So that is when our ego comes to our protection, which is of course very, very beneficial in those sort of situations. So if you assume that someone is a walking, don't tell them because those kind of situations, a soul needs to be ready, mental capacity and emotional capacity. The person needs to be ready to process the information. So don't rush that process for someone if they have to figure it out. So the same thing for me is, for example, when I understand that someone is a walk-in, I don't jump on them and tell them, oh my God, you're a walk-in, ah! No, it's just like I say calm, I test the situation, and through conversation, I understand if the person is aware or the person is not aware. It's very, very intimate process. So that's something that needs to be, um, regarded with respect and I definitely do that with my clients but as I said I don't um, I don't have a reoccurring walking souls who work with me I had uh, two different uh, specific situations one of them did new and one of them didn't and both are fine because um, we have to have trust in the soul evolution process and that everything happens for our highest good so I hope you enjoyed this mystical, cozy video. Until we meet again, namaste.